2023 FDOT Design Manual, Overview of Major Changes, presented by Dwayne Carver, AICP. Other webinars that we have are going to provide more in-depth descriptions of edits specific to the 2023 FDM chapters. This webinar is designed to cover the following global edits that were made to the FDM. These include the adoption of the 2018 AASHTO Green Book, the Turnpike Design Handbook Migration, which also is covered in a separate webinar, the sunset of the 300 series and migration to the 900 series, which also will have separate webinars, and to introduce a new system for the intake and tracking of proposed edits to the FDM. The 2018 AASHTO Green Book was released in 2018, and it had a five-year phasing period, which is upon us. So 2023 is the end of the phase-in period. So at this point, it was necessary for us to go through the FDM very carefully and look at it from top to bottom and update any references that were still in there to the old 2015 Green Book uh, to update those to the new 2018 AASHTO Green Book. So that was done uh, throughout the FDM, and you'll find it in various tables and, and references um, in all, all kinds of chapters through there. This was not an optional change. This was something that we had to do in order to be consistent with FHWA. And so uh, that's what was done this year with that. And it did not result in any major revisions to our criteria. It, it really is kind of more of a housekeeping exercise. There, there were a few things that changed in some of the tables, but a lot of times it was just updating the references and the notes to say it's going to the 2018 Green Book instead of the 2015 Green Book. But you will find those edits throughout the FDM. The Turnpike Design Handbook Migration is covered at greater length under a separate webinar on this. Uh, but as far as being uh, part of the 2023 FDM, it was a major effort. It resulted in a number of changes throughout the document. That's why it was kind of a global effort throughout the FDM. The purpose of it was to sunset the Turnpike Design Handbook and migrate the relevant criteria from that into the FDM. And again, that's covered under a separate webinar, and you will see these changes throughout the FDM uh, here and there in different chapters. The migration from the 300 series to the 900 series. So as of 2023, the FDM 300 series has, uh, for plans production has been removed from the FDM. Now you can still find it um, in the old versions that are online, but it's no longer available in the new version. If you go to the website today, you will see it shown uh, here where it says previous manual versions and it says 300 series has been sunset. It's been completely replaced by the 900 series, which is also called, uh, sometimes called next gen plans production. Those old criteria are still available under those earlier versions of the FDM though. So if you have contracts that are using those and you still need to operate under that, that's all still there. It's just no longer being documented and brought forward or edited uh, in the new version. Everything new is gonna be put into the 900 series, which is what we're seeing for 2023. There will also be a separate webinar available on this transition. Uh, probably, in fact, there'll be several before it's over with. So this was required for several reasons. Uh, for one thing, the CAD software that is, was set up to work with the 300 series is being updated, and it's quickly making that series obsolete, so it needed to be updated and changed. The industry and FDOT are adopting 3D plans, and this is also more compatible with the 900 series, and so the 900 series is set up to help us explain and, and how to use these uh, these new software for the 3D plan sets. And the industry itself has requested that FDOT move to the more contemporary workflows that are provided in the FDM 900 series. So for all these reasons, this is something that is, uh, is being done and is, is adopted by the department and we're moving ahead with this. And so these changes are underway now. The last thing to go over is some changes to the FDM, we're calling the intake process. In 2023, or in preparation for 2023, the volume of changes that were created by the, both the TDH and the 900 series edits required an overhaul of how we actually produce the FDM, how we handle all the edits, how we track them and take care of them. And we learned a lot of lessons from that. And so we're rolling those lessons learned forward um, into how we want to be handling FDM edits going forward from this point. So one outcome of that is we developed kind of a new 
I'm calling it a semi-automated app. It's not 100% automated. There's still a lot of decision points in it. But uh, a lot of the automation is in the front end to accept and verify and help us track any proposed changes to the FDM. So this new system will allow you to submit your suggestion online and receive a confirmation email when that is suggested or when you, when you submit it. It provides an automated collection and tracking of these change requests. So they're collected for us and kind of kept in a place where we can go back and look at them anytime and see what kind of progress we're making on them. And it will allow us to feed those directly into our review process. And this is the kind of the new review process that was introduced last summer for production of next year's FDM. And I know that kind of happens behind the scenes and, and most folks who are not in the criteria section are not that interested in that, but it makes a big difference in how effectively we can get the document out, how quickly we can get it reviewed, and then get it uh, correct and accurately into the hands of the people who need to see it. And so this will feed directly into that process. We got a lot of good feedback on that process last year. Folks seem to like it, and this will help us be successful with that process going forward in future edits of the FDM. So I want to take a few minutes and just kind of go through it. The next few, few slides are going to go over this new intake form just a little bit. Mostly it's just going to show you how to get to it and, and give you some, um, some pointers about that. Uh, management has directed that we need a stronger business case for FDM edits. And so they want to see uh, in the future as we make edits that these really are value added changes to the FDM, if, especially if it's something that's going to affect policy, affect cost, affect uh, the time, maybe shift risk, all these things. We need to have a good business case for doing those. So the new system that we've uh, put in place will allow you, if, if you want to make a proposed change, you can actually help build your own business case for that change as you go through. There will be fields in there that will allow you to make the case for why you think this change that you are, have in mind is going to be of great benefit to the state. We know that this process will evolve over the coming year, so don't be surprised if, it, if you are looking at this webinar later in the year. It may look a little different than it does right now. Um, we, we are expecting that the process will grow and change and, and improve over time, uh, but we're pretty happy with where we have it right now to get started with. And we do welcome feedback on the new intake system as you're using it. If you have an idea for how it might work better, the system itself, uh, you know, let us know that. So the way this works, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. If you go to the FDM design manual page, which you have to go to anyway, if you wanna use the FDOT design manual, at the top of the page now, you'll see that we've got these blocks that let you go to the different sections of the FDM. And the uh, last one on that is the comments or suggestions block. And so if you click on that, it will take you to this page, which is the FDOT intake form. And in this intake form, you'll notice that there's two blocks at the bottom. One is for FDOT employees and the other is for external contributors. So if you're an employee, you want to use the employees button. If you're an external contributor and you don't work for DOT, you can use that button. The difference is if you're an employee button, it'll ask you for some more specific information that will help us make sure that we can get back in touch with you and um, you won't be asked for that information because you just won't be able to provide it if you're an external contributor. So you pick the right one that you you know, that fits who you are and proceed from that point. At this point, it'll take you into the intake form and I'm not gonna walk through all the, the pieces of that. There's a, a couple uh, sections to it, but it gives you an opportunity to describe what you want to uh, change in the FDM. If you have a, a PDF or something that you wanna upload to show that, there's a place where you can do that as well. That information will stay with your request. It'll be tracked and it'll stay in the database along with it. So we, we won't you know, lose track of any of that. It all stays together all through the process. It also gives you an opportunity to explain uh, why you think this is going to be important. Is there going to be any cost savings? Do you see that it might maybe cost more money, but you think it's going to be worth it for some other reason? Uh, so it gives you a chance to, to express all of that. Also, if you have some ideas about which other offices might be affected by the change you're proposing, it'll give you a chance to do all that. So all those things we put in there at the end, you'll get an email back after you submit it that says thank you and it'll summarize everything that you told us and you'll know that it's in the system. You'll actually have a number then that you can, um, if you need to refer to, if you want to follow up later and kind of see what's going on with your, with your edit, um, then you can do that. As we go through the system, when we make your change and we make a decision about whether we want to try to keep this in the FDM or not, we also will reach out to you and let you know, you know what the final decision was on that. It may be we looked at it and decided, yeah, that's not something that we're going to work on this year. Thank you for, for letting us know about it. Or it may be that you know it's something that we really think would be a great idea and we want to let you know about that as well. So either way, we'll let you know 
the disposition of your proposed edit as soon as we've had a chance to review it and decide what that disposition is going to be. In summary, for 2023, we updated the global references to the ASHTO 2018 Green Book. We migrated the Turnpike Design Handbook into the FDM. We sunset the 300 series and migrated everything into the 900 series. And we introduced this new intake form for proposed FDM edits. And finally, you may have noticed there's also a new cover for the FDM. So in the past, we've had a different cover for each section. And what we've uh, come to realize is that folks have gotten pretty used to the idea that there's these different sections of the FDM. They didn't necessarily need to have their own covers. Going forward, what we'd like to do is what we started doing this year. You may have noticed that this year there's actually a picture of a, an FDOT project on there. This year it was, it was for a roundabout. Uh, we will be looking for other projects to use in future years to kind of highlight the ways that the FDOT design manual is being used to actually design and construct things uh, on our state highway system. So look forward to uh, other projects being on the cover and um, in future versions of the FDM. And if you have any questions, here is my contact information.